Welcome to Team Building Cultures, the podcast designed to deliver tools and tips for improving team communication, collaboration, and fostering a culture where teams thrive. Now, here's your host, Beverly Hathorne, owner of Strategic HR Consultants. Hello, podcast listeners, and thank you so much for joining this episode of Team Building Cultures. I am your host, Beverly Hathorne, and today we're going to chat with Ritu Chopra. Ritu inspires people with her coaching sincerity and professional leadership experience, and that includes managing business and IT operations in Fortune 500 companies for over 20 years. Ritu is a management consultant, owner of Chopra Management Services. She's also an international speaker and a certified executive coach. She wrote The Art of Life and Mastering Life, focusing on personal mastery to achieve success in professional domains. Her latest book, set to be released March 8th, entitled Women Leadership in the 21st Century, talks about empowering women of all generations and all societies. Ritu hosts and executive produces Despite the Challenges, which is a TV show about people who overcome impeding circumstances, disabilities, or other barriers to contribute to society. She's also founder of Lead My Way, a nonprofit organization providing advocacy and education in gender-based violence, empowerment, and life skills. Ritu, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm very excited to speak with you. I find you to be a very highly accomplished and intelligent person really working to contribute to humanity. So I really thank you for all that you do. Beverly, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your kind words. And I think we uh, find ourselves at the crossroads sometime in life uh, that a bigger mission becomes more important than just our own personal successes. So I am right now at that crossroads. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. And if we think about it, a lot of us are probably at those crossroads. So. <laughs> yes. Tell me in your book, for your book, Women Leadership in the 21st Century, what do you mean by women leadership and how is that different than leadership roles in general? Well, this is a good question. So let's talk about leadership in general. So most people would associate leaders as that someone in a corporate high up in a title with a title or a, a politician or someone of that nature. Uh, who who are very visible to us and we look up to them as our leaders in the society. Uh, when you look at the definition of the leadership and what is expected from a leader, a good listener, empathy, all kinds of traits that uh, all these subject matter experts and uh, it, they tell us that these are the qualities of a leader. And I find that these qualities are existent to people at all levels of society, especially women. We as mothers, as caregivers, as nurturers, we are good listeners. We have to not only to our children, to their needs, to the family that we care for, people we work with in the society, we have to become patient and have that empathy. So I find that those roles, uh, the qualities are existent in us. So to me, I, at this stage, um, I find it the leadership doesn't come with the title. Leadership can be Mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity where uh, people need to step up and and take that opportunity and take that action. And that's being a leader. That's awesome. And I certainly agree. I feel that we all have leadership potential. We have but to step up and take our place. And we all have something to offer. We have but to just discover what that is. So I totally agree with what you're saying. So tell me, what inspired you to write this book? 
Um, I had for a long time thought of in my own uh, professional career that as I observed as a woman of color being in a technology space and uh, sometime being the only female in an all-male teams uh, and in my, especially in my role, nobody reports to me, but uh, I'm working with C-suite and everyone has a contribution uh, a role to play for uh, the objectives of those initiatives, et cetera. So that was a pretty interesting dynamics for me on the mm -hmm. credibility fact, facts and being able to communicate with people of all levels, not just the C-suite, but their teams that who would be doing the actual tasks. And I being an observant person, uh, you know, and bringing in my native philosophies and humil humility and, you know, uh, compassion and things. So I was able to apply uh, the best of the East and the West, <laughs> so to speak, <laughs> right, to come uh, to bring in into my communication styles. And, uh, and then a lot of time, I don't have a competition. Uh, I am a subject matter expert delivering a certain objective where I am being engaged in. So there was a very different um, role for me that I was part of. And I would see that women who are, so to speak, in a leadership roles would struggle. Um, and another thing that's always was inside me that to write something, uh, for mm -hmm. strategic book for women leadership. Um, well, life keeps us busy, and so was I, and it was something on my to-do list. Uh, but during uh, pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown, um, this was an opportunity that COVID has equalized or brought people globally on our knees. There was, you know, a lot of opportunity to have deep thinking. There was so much observation around the world, sitting in your living rooms in front of your TVs and seeing that destruction, seeing that chaos, seeing yes. that setbacks that people had gone through emotionally and financially. Um, I changed uh, my ideas about that book. I still wanted to write that book, but the team somehow to took a total different approach of the holistic leadership for women. And Beverly, that I want to bring it through, I am not trying to say that as with any, any intention that women are not given opportunities. What I wanted to say here was that during COVID lockdown and the aftermath of that, a lot of women in the leadership role or a lot of women who were entrepreneurs um, had left workforce, either mm -hmm. by choice or they had no choice. They had to take care of the family members. They had to teach, uh, um, you know, homeschool children. Uh, they were still working. There was just like so much was imposed upon them. Uh, something else as my NGO uh, that we do uh, awareness events for um, uh, uh, women empowerment. And I noticed that it would be news that the uh, domestic violence cases were on the rise, but the reports of them were not. Because now ah. people, when in those cases, when they would be during daytime, they are out of the house. Now they were in the closed doors for extending yes. of time. There yes. was no letting out. Uh, and so I saw that. And that impact is not just women here. Impact is on children as well. And uh, either the perpetrators are men or women. It can be. Um, so it was the across the board on families. And that was very difficult for me. Uh, that we found people in my situation, we found that we are so helpless right now. And so I wanted to, I took a, a very different look at this uh, topic. And then, uh, as I said earlier, that uh, the leadership quality that we expect from so-called leaders, we have them at all levels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw that 
talented women of baby boomer generation or women over 50 uh, were leaving workforce because I have known women globally that are very accomplished women and they were rethinking. I said, okay, oh. I gave my life for this corporation or this work and uh, life has become so uncertain. I need to take a different look. What's important to me, right? Yes. How they were changing their lifestyles. There was so much was happening. So I thought uh, that how much talent these women would take with them into the hiding of the retirement or early retirements or choosing a different career while our younger generation, Gen Zers, that they are growing up with artificial intelligence. They're smart people, but they do not have the skills and experiences of uh, the generation that's leaving workforce and there has to be something. So my idea here was to tap into these uh, experienced, mm -hmm. uh, talented women to pass the baton uh, to younger generation and create uh, conscious leaders of tomorrow. Yes, yes, I totally understand what you're saying, because as um, our senior workforce or uh, certain level workforce start to depart, they take a lot of learned information with them, things that they just learned while they were working there that you may not find in a book or in a classroom or in a virtual class. We lose all that valuable learning and understanding. So with that, what do you think, how can younger generations of women find leadership opportunities and be successful in those roles considering some of their mentors have already stepped away. So this, this is a two-part answer for that. Uh, the leadership roles and opportunities would always be there, right? Mm -hmm. It is how to get, find them and get to them. So for the most, in a, in a very simple way, uh, when we say leadership role, that is a lot of responsibilities attached to to it. So with that responsibility to execute and deliver, there is a skill set, B, experience. Yes. Skill can be learned, but experience cannot be learned. It can, it comes that's right. Time. So that's where the mentorship is going to come in. Mentorship gotcha. of the women uh, or past generations. Uh, so um, that's, that's one thing. Now, uh, the other part of that, we have, if we realize it or not, we are into the fourth industrial revolution. We are at the doorstep of the artificial intelligence-led, integrated, platforms-led digital economy. So into that digital platforms, your talents can be found as you are an HR consultant, and I'm sure that you experience it a whole lot, that corporations and organizations can find buyers across the platform, across the planet, so as they can find the workforce across the planet. Yes, exactly. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. So, so when your uh, labor market is stretched out in every continent, your buyers and sellers are stretched out every part of the country, uh, every part of the planet. So that is a digital economy. We realize it or not, we are in it already. Yes, so we are. With, with that digital economy, it's a total new skill set uh, that they are needed. And experts in a World Economic Forum are predicting by the end of this decade, um, the 50% of the workforce would need reskilling. And I have sp spoken to uh, think tanks and experts globally, and they said, well, that is a little bit uh, generous estimate. COVID has expedited. We may see within two to three years that 
a significant part of the workforce would need reskilling. So when we talk about reskilling and we talk about leadership roles, let's, let me explain this and I will be slow so the listeners can follow through it. So if we're looking at reskilling, so that would be the millennial generation that has already leadership roles. And now the entering workforce, Gen Zers, are coming in with the technical knowledge of artificial intelligence and robots, and they're being trained and schooled into it. And they are more closer to than the millennials are. So the millennial generation, either they're in a corporate career, blue collar, or any other type of industry, those are the generation that I think that would be in that uh, uh, that bucket where there would be reskilling needed because the robots would replace a lot of those jobs. So the jobs Isn't would be there. Yes. So the jobs would be there, but it would be uh, different skill sets needed. Right. So those we would see people with experience are usually in leadership roles, right, in a higher career um, and responsible roles. So to me, I start thinking about what would leadership look like? OK, so here I'm going to step uh, stop and then I'm going to create another scenario for you and the listeners. So you say that uh, we are working on a artificial intelligent integrative uh, platforms. So the uh, resources, talents can be sourced anywhere on the planet. So let's say you have a uh, someone in North America uh, and you have a, a talented woman in Egypt, another person in Kenya or Ghana, mm-hmm. and maybe an LGBTQ person somewhere else across the planet. They are all equally capable of delivering the same thing. Very good. Yes. Who is the leader now? Yes, that's how that's an interesting concept. Now, how do you define the leadership role? Because they are trained for that skill. And now there is no gender uh, uh, issue anymore. Right. Traditionally, it is a male into their 40s, 50s. Uh, that who is seen as in a leadership executive role. Now, uh, with the robotic uh, platforms, and and that's the questions I started thinking, right? And I asked other people, and we're too new uh, into this situation to have Mm -hmm. an answer, Mm -hmm. right? There Mm -hmm. are a lot of questions. We don't have answers to all of them yet. So that is something that I wanted to draw attention to that we need to redefine the leadership. So I keep coming back to the leadership at all levels of society, and we need to tap into that. And the other push, other things that were really high on my mind as a humanitarian myself, I look at in what we raise our younger generation and 10, uh, 15 year old boys and girls now, 15 to 20 years into the future, what kind of world they would be living in and what type of nurturing and mentoring they need. It's- yes, because those those kids, those uh, kids in their teens right now, they were brought up in the AI society. You know, they, yeah, they've, you know, computers and tech, the technology that we learned and had to grow to accept That's all they've ever known. So what does their leadership, how how is that going to work for them um, when it comes to leadership? What Uh, what do they see as, as, as a leader? Or will they all be leaders? Or will they not need leaders? Everybody's functional. We don't have the answers to them. Yeah. We don't have all the answers to them. But the other question here is that where I envision is that 15 to 20 years from now, we are going to have higher environmental challenges, lack of food, lack of drinking water in many parts of the world, maybe Mm. another uh, future pandemics or warfare. So when it comes to sustainable development goals, 
where the UN 2030 is leading to and the, the digital economy, the fourth industrial revolution, it brings in a whole lot of new challenges, environmental, humanitarian, uh, I, uh, technological, social justice, global equality, global health. It brings in a whole lot of new issues going into the next two decades. And the younger people now would need a very different leadership qualities. Wow, that is so interesting. I don't know that has occurred to a lot of people. We just kind of go along with what's being created, but we don't really realize how that's changing many concepts, leadership being one of them. I don't think we really realize what small changes that appear to us to be small changes are actually huge upturns and what we know and how we live and communicate and collaborate today. So that kind of brings me to uh, another subject I wanted you to talk to us about. Uh, You mentioned in your book about women of all generations. So uh, can you expand on that a little bit, kind of enlighten us on what you mean about um, women of all generations? What is yeah. that when you, yes. what are so you trying to cover there? Uh, let's, let's look at, because everything that I do, I call myself global citizen. As you see my documentaries, okay. you see any of the work I do, I look at global perspective. And again, I, in this book, I'm looking at global perspective because for humanity, we cannot confine ourselves into the boundaries of a nation anymore or boundaries of a culture anymore. We are human species, our needs are similar uh, in many ways, and our challenges are similar in many ways. And in yes. integrated economies and digital economies, we would uh, do injustice not looking at globally. So, so when I say to answer your questions, uh, women uh, leadership at all generation and women uh, of all generation, let's see 200 years ago from now where we are. The role of women, as I talk about in the book as well, uh, the women has been worshipped and women has gone through the, the uh, very uh, disrespectful. Yes, the, right. Object. We've run the gamut for sure. <laughs> so all in between, the power, the, the power that women have we sometimes don't realize ourselves. We have to shine our own light to bring in the confidence in our own selves. But we look at, coming to your question, we look at the journey uh, of, say, a couple of hundred years ago. Um, Women to gain a respectful place in the society outside of their homes took so much effort. Right to vote, right for equality, and even in the third decade of the 21st century, we're fighting for it. Yes. Equal justice. Yes. Yes. Uh, we're still fighting for that. And, and uh, today's economy, in third decades of 21st century, women are contributing a, a large portion, somewhere 48 to 50% into the global economy, either awesome. by. Uh, agriculture uh, in agriculture to aerospace you see women everywhere and we still have to fight for a respectable place in the society that is that is not acceptable we need to change our mindset we need to change our outlook we need to treat each other with respect start with yes the yes women of all ages the women uh I think even if women do not have a high title or Ivy League degree uh, to become a leader, their contribution to creating the next generation, nurturing, giving them that that, um, uh, support and care to raise the next generation to become capable leaders or capable citizens of tomorrow is a contribution. Yes, it is. 
Yes, it is. It's a big contribution. It's a necessary it's contribution. Right? So say that if it's a newborn child, child doesn't grow uh, either a boy or a girl. They don't grow up themselves. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> Giving a life, uh, either it's a man or a woman, the life that they have been given, uh, that is a gift. And that's what they uh, create something from the gift of life that they have. They create their own place in the society. Uh, either it's a title or possessions or big uh, homes or cars or possessions they have created. It all started with somewhere where they were raised by parents. That's right. And that's something that you and I have chatted about, uh, women bringing back their nurturing nature, because that is critical to the upbringing of a society. Yes. And it is a contribution. And and that's where I see that the leadership doesn't exist in titles. Leadership exists on all levels of society. We just need to acknowledge it. We just need to give each other enough respect, men and women. And I see Beverly again and again, every opportunity I have to speak, either on an interview like this or in a front of a group of people. And I say that as a mother, if we raise a little boy and a girl and they grow up to be a man and a woman, we are part of a family. That's we right. are part of the community. Um, we are part of that that network of uh, uh, the society. Right. And I don't like gender wars. I do not like that at all. That we are part of this human experience. That's and right. And that's a big contribution. That's a yes. huge contribution that yes. we make as yes. women. Yes. yes. Uh, either we do paid work or unpaid work, whatever that is, because wherever we stand in 2023, and if we look at 10 to 15 years from now, we are going to be in our lifetime, we'll change, dr see the drastic changes, not just in economy wise, but environmental and others. So let's, let's look towards the future. Stop that. That's not helping us anymore. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Let's look toward the future. And we're not talking about tomorrow. We're talking about the future. So what are our contributions and how is that changing the way the future is going to look? One of the things I wanted to touch base on was your uh, in your book, you talk about the charisma and adaptability of a leader. So what are your what are your thoughts around that? Help us understand that what that concept. It is is uh, well, thank you for the question. <laughs> and I think that's there's a lot more about it goes with the charisma uh, of a leader. Um, as a definition, we can speak about okay what it means. But I think it, it, a charismatic leader is again leader does not uh, live in a title a leader could be anybody mm -hmm. um and uh, the charisma of a person is in their communication how they connect with other human beings yes and that's where i wanted to bring the women the nurturing point that our dna has to bring in out uh, where uh, our younger generation, the Gen Zers, our adolescents are growing up with tools, little devices in their hands, and losing yes. that human touch and losing that capabilities of human connections and communications. And if, as a visionary, if I see that, how they will be able to have um, uh, personal relations uh, mm -hmm. Business relations, if they are just communicating with the devices, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the charisma of people comes to touching and connecting with other human beings, regardless of our differences, um, you know, cultural differences, or how we speak or dress or eat or play, is that human experiences in many ways are similar. So that's where I want to kind of bring in at the top the charisma of people is that not losing our 
very human nature into going into our digital worlds in the next two, three decades. Uh, so I, I think uh, I could go on and on, but in the interest of time, but I want that to, the charisma of leaders is that capabilities of connecting, uh, capabilities of communicating, capabilities of empathy, and seeing that mm-hmm. the humanness in others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we can very well lose that with so much that's going on in the world where people are not recognizing dealing with other humans and are kind of losing their empathy uh, because of certain situations, uh, specifically our political atmosphere sometime, um, our religious atmosphere, Mm -hmm. our social issues, allowing people to just be who they are. And like you said, with the children growing up today, connecting only via some device or AI, not actually going outside, playing, having arguments and disagreements, understanding how to settle those, building those social skills, that is something very valuable that we need to be mindful of possibly losing, which um, I wanted to briefly touch on another topic in your book, which is power and persuasion. And you talk about that has to do with how you see yourself and how others see you. And that is so critical because you build those social skills and when you're younger, And they don't typically develop in adults. (laughs) They develop in children. So tell us what what your thoughts are on that on that topic. Um, Let me let me just answer uh, what you had just said that that if they don't have they don't develop it too late. If they don't develop it, they are not aware of what's lacking. And that's where I see the older generation of women and men also to mentor Mm -hmm. younger generation who has grown up with the devices, right? So Mm -hmm. bring that humanness and empathy and those uh, those capabilities of uh, resolving disagreements because as long as the humans are there, um, the disagreements will be there. They will be at home, they will be outside home. But this is the ability to engage be able to understand other people's perspective. Um, And that's where the nurturing nature comes in. And that's where the persuasion comes in. How do you persuade others? How do you reflect the power? How do you know what the power is? Power is not aggression. No, it's not. Right? No, that's a misuse of power. That's a misuse of power. And uh, imposing something because you have a certain title is not power. It's imposing and a misuse of given power. So the power Mm -hmm. that I talk about in very much detail, how different cultures describe the power. And uh, um, so in interest of time, I would just kind of stick to a very limited here that power and persuasion is part of the persona that we develop. And yes. through empathy, through nurturing. And the nurturing comes in from our elder generations, from families or mentorship that we seek and we give, right? And I encourage younger people, um, uh, college grads and people who are entering workforce, it says seek mentors. Seek yes. mentors. There's a lot of people would be willing to guide you, but you need That's to right. be, You need to ask. That's right. That's right. There are a lot of people here who Mm -hmm. would love to have a hand in bringing up the next generation of leaders and and to let them benefit from their experience, which, as you said, cannot be learned. That's something that comes with time. But you can grab on to an experienced mentor and kind of soak up some of that information and knowledge to help you along. I wanted to let the audience know that not only are you this awesome global citizen and forward thinker, um, but you're also heavily involved in 
uh, technology uh -huh. and that you're extremely experienced and knowledgeable about um, IT technology, particularly the uh, DLP, the data privacy compliance and those type of things. Just give us a brief overview on what you do in those areas. Oh, thank you, Beverly, for that question. I had spent two and a half decades in Fortune 500 companies and IT departments and going through any type of IT compliances initiatives um, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, uh, data privacy, data loss to cybersecurity, access controls, who should have access to what information and technical systems um, and process audits that technology audits, et cetera, uh, most recently GDPR uh, as well. That is the European Union uh, 30, involving 32 countries, the data privacy initiative, mm -hmm. consumer rights. So once we are in a digital economy, there is every level of business would fall into those because uh, with Web 2.0 and beyond, uh, once yes. you are searchable, and there, that's where uh, the cyber threats of uh, people's personal identities and information um, becomes more critical from a uh, global governance and uh, corporate governance responsibilities uh, uh, have, uh, you know, been, been uh, identified and have been working on um, Ever since as the technical platform changed, there's some kind of new uh, data privacy. Um, yes. So I have been involved with Fortune 500 companies. I have learned a lot. Somehow my personal interests um, had uh, changed that I wanted to make more global impact than just be behind the scenes helping a uh, technology department of a company. Um, I made that choice. And uh, I still am very knowledgeable into um, mm -hmm. as a management consultant. I do bring in a lot of strengths in that area. Uh, the type of initiatives, the documentations, the audit processes companies have to put in place. Uh, so I hope that I have answered your question. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. And I would just like to thank you on behalf of myself and our listeners, I just want to thank you for helping us be aware that we need to be not only global thinkers, but future thinkers. We need to look at what's going on in our economy, our society, and see how that's going to impact future generations. So I don't think a lot of us uh, have thought to that extent. So I just want to thank you again for opening our eyes and enlightening us in an area that we may not have been very familiar. I, for one, will be doing more to learn about the global impact and particularly uh, how AI and all these new systems are impacting the society and the work environment as we know it today. So I, for one, will be seeking information and I will start with, of course, reading your book, Women Leadership in the 21st Century, when it is launched on March 8th. I have that day correct? Yes, it would be on March 8th and there would be Kindle version available. Uh, people can search out if they are listening to it before March 8th, there would be a free download available. I encourage oh. people to go ahead and have grab a copy um, um, anytime during that uh, period or after. So um, the, the ideas here, as you mentioned, that we just not need to be only a future thinkers, but global thinkers, because our words are connected. Yes, and yes. To be conscious consumers, we are better off to be conscious leaders and uh, it, we don't have to have Ivy League degrees to become leaders. We can we can see those opportunities to to uh, be action oriented and be mindful of what's happening around us. And I think that is even those small steps uh, combined uh, would become a big step for humanity. 
Awesome. I certainly agree. We have leadership capabilities to some extent inherent in who we are. And we just need to exercise those and bring them forth. Well, this has been an awesome interview. I thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to get your book. Can you tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you? They may want to talk to you about things going on in the organization or just in, in their life. When, how can, and Absolutely. since you're a management consultant, yes. Can you tell Absolutely. them how they can get in touch connect with you? With us, uh, connect with us on LinkedIn and our social media uh, on our, through the website. All the links are available. Uh, our emails or connect contact uh, information is available on the website, ritu.chopra.com. And uh, also at a LinkedIn, they can find me and uh, anyone interested in exploring um, our initiative for Let's Come Together. We do have a Facebook community for volunteers to be part of that. Men and women both are encouraged uh, to become okay. part of it. Uh, going forward, after the launch of the book, we will have some training opportunities how these uh, older generation of men and women can create form um, groups in their own communities uh, about awareness of environment, awareness of uh, cyber threats and things like that. And mm -hmm. just the small changes to make bigger impact. Um, I encourage people to be open and just check us out if they like it, become part of that uh, global community. We welcome them. Um, they can also go in and I'm going to share uh, here as if you could see that. Let's come together. So it's a Facebook mm -hmm. group. And all the information is on our book landing page on my website. Um, okay. And, uh, people can find and and I'll be sure to put that information in the synopsis of the, this interview so that our listeners can have that as well. So Ritu, this has been awesome. I thank you so much for being a part of Team Building Cultures today. And I'm sure that this interview will be listened to and adhered by many and it, it's just been uh, such a joy in chatting with you and getting new perspectives and new understanding which is what we should all seek on a daily basis so this has been great thank you Beverly I have been enjoying this conversation and I am really pleased to to have this opportunity and share with your audience and uh, I look forward to many more conversation in the future Absolutely, most definitely. Well, folks, this is Beverly Hathorne, your host of Team Building Cultures. And today we've been speaking with Ms. Ritu Chopra, author of the new book, Women Leadership in the 21st Century. Be sure to get your copy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Team Building Cultures. We hope we have delivered helpful and enlightening information to help you create your dream team. Join us next time 